Hello and welcome back to CIS 165. This is your instructor, Victor Campos. All right, so we've got a brand new week, week 11 of the semester, and a new chapter to work with. This is chapter 7, jQuery. Now, in short, jQuery is a, is a way to write JavaScript, but in sort of a shortcut method. We will see that where we had to write long JavaScript commands, now we can write shorter jQuery versions. We also get access to some tricks that are a lot easier to do in jQuery than jQuery than JavaScript. So let me show you what we're going to end up with. In honor of the upcoming Star Wars movie, I've got Star Wars Droid Name Generator. Now let me refresh it for a moment. Did you see that? fade in effect. Let me do that again. So these items are going to fade in. That's via jQuery. We can create animation pretty easily with jQuery. All right, so the concept here is I fill in my name, first name, last name, and a birthday. Click go, and then I get my Star Wars droid name. So let me fill in my name, birthday, Click Go or press Enter. Victor Campos, your droid name is VI1. You are a medical droid. And so I get a medical droid. Did you also see the animation of the text fading in and the picture? That, again, is something we can do in jQuery. Let me see someone else. George Lucas. I don't really know his birthday and stuff. I think it's like May 20th or something, 1950. I don't know. Go. George Lucas, your droid name is G5L8. You are a scout droid, and he's a scout droid. So um, this is using a lot of jQuery to make some fun stuff, and you get these results. Janet Smith, your droid name is JAJ12. You are a protocol droid. So I'm going to provide you these graphics, but you can use your own. And we're going to create the JavaScript and jQuery to make this work. So as usual, you should have read the book before you watch the video. Read your chapter 7. So I'm going to set up a week 11 with an index file and open it up in Visual Code, and we'll get started. So I'll set myself up that this is chapter 7. And my H1 here will be Star Wars Droid Name Generator. We need a form to accept the input of the person's name. So after the H1, we'll create a form. Needs an ID so we can reference it. Form Droid is fine. I'm going to create a field set, which will be a way to group together these elements, which requires a legend about you. That'll be the text that appears in the field set. We need a label, which is the text visible on screen, first name. Another label, last name. Another label for birthday. Well, each of these labels needs the for attribute. What is this going to be used for? This is for an input field first. For last. And then for in DOB, date of birth. So the label goes along with some input fields. Input of type text. We can accept text in here. We can put a placeholder. This then requires the name and ID attributes to be the same as the for attribute of the label. So in first. And then the ID attribute so we can reference it in JavaScript. 
Same thing for the last name. Input type of text. We are accepting text in this box, a placeholder, to guide them to see what they can type. The name of this particular text box in last, same as the label, and the ID. Now the date of birth is a little bit different. It does start off as an input field, but we have a type of date. This is pretty cool because then a person can select a calendar drop-down box. No placeholder, but it needs a name in DOB. And the accompanying ID. After that field set, we have our buttons. In a new paragraph, I will add an input of type submit and a value of go. That's the text that will appear. Space in input then of type reset. And its value will be clear. So looking at my code so far, nothing special yet, but I should see my form. It doesn't look like how my example was yet, but we're getting there. Now obviously if I type anything here, Go doesn't do anything really, but Clear should clear things. And you will see, depending on your browser, you'll be able to type uh, numbers in a date format. Or you've also got the drop-down box here to choose a calendar. If you're looking at it, this in a different browser, it may look a little bit different. Let's say I'm opening this in Firefox. So that birthday looks a little bit different. It looks like I can type something like January 1st, 1980. Uh, so this is something we'll deal with with our JavaScript a little bit later. Depending on the browser, some browsers will show you a cool date box and others won't. All right, so we're going to display a variety of outputs. So after the form, I'm going to create a div called id div show. I'm going to show a variety of things in this parent div. Then I'm going to have a div that will display an error message. There's a few error messages we can deal with. So id there of error. MSG error message. I want a blank empty space here and I want to confirm that there will be one so I'll add the NBSP special character non-breaking space. Then I want a div for information about the person. It'll say you but this will change dynamically because with the ID name you we can change it. Well, we're going to display the original name, the original person's name, then their droid name. So ID here, name droid, and then a div for your droid type. that has an ID of name type. I also want to display an image. So a div there, which will have an image tag, and the image is going to have the ID droid picture. Now we need a source for the image, and at the moment source will be empty, but we're going to change that dynamically via JavaScript. When a person's name is processed into a droid name, it will then also display a droid picture. Okay, so all of that stuff there, when we see it in the browser, looks something like that. I want to style my form a little bit, so we'll go back to the head block and create some style, some CSS. First, I want any 
instance of a field set element. I want the width to be 10m, 10 characters wide. So next I want those IDs down here to be hidden, except the error message. So pound name u, that's the ID there, comma, and also pound name droid, comma, pound name type, and pound droid picture. So basically all of these divs here, name u, name droid, name type, and droid picture. All of those I want to style the same way, which is to display none. I don't want those elements to actually display yet. So the result there is the form doesn't look as wide as before. It's only 10 M's wide and all those message divs down there are hidden until necessary. So that's some of our basic styling and we'll do more via JavaScript. So speaking of JavaScript, we're starting to use jQuery. The motto of jQuery is write less, do more. So that means we're going to write less code to do more. Ultimately, jQuery is JavaScript, but it's sort of like shortcuts. In order to use jQuery, however, we need to load the jQuery library, which basically means connecting to the jQuery file. It's a file full of thousands of lines of definitions, which give us the shorthand to write the longhand. We can download the file and make it part of our project or simply connect to the online version. The book mentions both ways, and I'm going to connect to the online version. So I'm connecting to the latest version as of this video. Before our JavaScript block, I'm going to add another JavaScript element, another script tag that is, and what I'm doing here is I'm giving this script a source. So I'm connecting to a JavaScript file before I write my custom JavaScript. So we connect to https colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash jQuery dash three dot two dot one dot min dot js. So a JavaScript file that has been minified version 3.2.1 of the jQuery file on the jQuery server in the code subdirectory online connected securely. So now we have access to the jQuery code. Without this, all of the code we're about to write would not work. You'd get an error message right away. Then inside of our script block, after use strict, we're going to create variables for these various objects up on screen. So var. Now our syntax here is we're going to use a dollar symbol, then l form droid equal to. So if you read the book, this is obvious, but I'll write it in jQuery and then the JavaScript equivalent. Dollar symbol, parentheses, quotes, pound, form, droid. This is the jQuery version of var l form droid equal to document dot get element by id quotes form droid. So plain old JavaScript, new cool jQuery. So both create an element, L form droid, both reference an ID, but in different ways. With jQuery, we can simply use the dollar selector and then the ID. And notice you have to put the pound sign in the quotes. The pound sign is basically equivalent to an ID. And before we had to say document dot get element by ID, no pound sign. So now we have to use the dollar selector and the pound sign in the quotes. And it's common practice and the book does this too, that we then use a dollar in front of the 
variable. We don't have to, but it's very common practice. Because if we create an element with plain old JavaScript, we cannot use jQuery methods upon it, and vice versa. If we create a jQuery object, we cannot use plain old JavaScript methods upon it. Okay, next up, I'm creating the same sort of thing with other items. L label equal to all instances of labels. Uh, this one is a little bit different than I just did, but let me write both of these and I'll explain. Dollar L input equal to dollar parentheses input. Dollar L error msg is equal to dollar quotes pound error msg. So let me pause here. I've got the pound sign for all instances of things that are that are IDs. Form droid, right here, form droid, it's an ID. Then I've got pound error message. So pound error message is right here, pound error message, ID. I don't have and you don't want a pound sign in front of these labels. There is no ID anywhere that has a, a value of label. There is the HTML element label. There is the HTML element input. So here, without the pound sign, I'm saying store a reference to all labels in this object. Next, I need elements for the other divs. So take a moment to double and triple check your spelling here. You'll get a lot of problems if you don't set this right the first time. Form droid is an ID, so there's a pound. Error message, name you, name droid, name type, and droid type, check your spelling, are all IDs, so they have the pound sign. Then you've got the dollar, because it's a jQuery-based element, droid picture, L name, etc. The only difference is label and input. No pound there, but each of them still has the dollar symbol to delineate this is a jQuery object, a jQuery-based object. If you run your project and check your output, F12, you should not have any errors. A possible error that you would get is that you misspelled the jQuery mobile file. the jQuery file and therefore when you try to run this it'll say error uncaught reference dollar is not defined well that's because we don't have the connection to jQuery.js so make sure no errors at this point we're going to create two arrays that will store the information about the droids so first we'll have var droid type This is an array. Then we'll have droid pick, a picture for the droid. So two variables. Be careful here, comma at the end of the line. So we'll start off with some examples here. We have an astromech type of droid. We have a battle type of droid. We have an interrogation type of droid. We can start with these three at the moment. And then I've got pictures for you. This will be in the uh, assignment description, uh, but it's similar to what we did with the superheroes. We're connecting to HTTPS VMC INK dot files dot WordPress dot com slash 2016 slash 12 slash astromech dot PNG comma. It's the exact same link, but instead of astromech.png, it's battle.png. So I'll just copy that. So that goes over to battle.png, comma, interrogation.png. This is all lowercase. So the third picture lines up with the third item of the type array. 
the second and the first line up. So the zero width droid type is astromech and the zero width picture is astromech.png. Check your spelling. So we've used a little bit of jQuery so far that is to create these elements. Well, what else we can do is introduce a little bit of animation. We're going to say $L label dot hide method, so open close parentheses, dot fade in, open close parentheses, and inside of fade in method, 1000. So as you're writing here, it may pop up method, jQuery fade in, needs a duration, could be a string or number. And we've got hide method, jQuery hide duration. So what these do is any instances of L label, let's hide them from the screen. Dot, then next fade it back in and it takes one second. So if I run that, you see all instances of the labels took one second to fade in. They became invisible for a moment with dot hide, and then they get faded in with dot fade in. Of course, then here, check your spelling, capital I is 1000 milliseconds. I want to do the same thing for the inputs. Dollar L input. All instances of input elements, hide them first, then fade them in. But this time, we'll say one and one quarter seconds. Take one and one quarter seconds to fade in. And that just gives a little bit of different visual interest. Watch this. So things fade in in a slightly different speed. You can make it more obvious by increasing these numbers, of course. Two and one quarter seconds. Looks something like that. All right, so when a person fills in the fields, they're going to get back a droid. I want the fields to clear themselves afterward. So we need a function to take care of that. Function clear form. This is end function clear form. And all it really does here is it references the jQuery based element L form ID, the zero with instance of the form dot reset. So whenever we need to clear the form programmatically, we have a function for that. This is different than clicking that button clear since that's built into the form. We want to be able to clear the form when other things happen, such as after go. Next up, we need a function to make the droid, make the droid name. Function fn make droid. This is end function make droid. This one is going to be based on clicking submit the go button or pressing enter. Therefore, there is a default event we need to prevent. So we're going to pass in the event object into this function. So right away I would say event dot prevent default. And we're going to add more to this function in a moment. But I want to set up my other function. Make droid here starts the process. It captures what the person typed into the boxes, processes things a little bit and displays it on screen. But the heavy lifting of looking at the person's name and taking their letters to make a droid name, that's from another function. Function fn droid name gen. Function droid name generate. This is end of our function, droid name gen. And this actually is going to take a variety of parameters because we're asking for the person's first name, last name, birthday. So taking those three things, we're going to generate a name. 
FN make droid starts the process, but FN droid name gen actually parses what was input. So that's going to require N1, comma, N2, and DOB. Name 1, name 2, and date of birth. With those three things that the person inputs, a droid name will be generated. That result will then be kicked back to function make droid, which displays it on screen. Well, all of this needs to happen after clicking Submit. So from our L form droid dot submit method, after we press the button Go or press Enter, there's a submittal. So we want to run the function make droid. There is that default event, however, so we have to write it in this syntax, anonymous function, capturing the event object and passing it into fn make droid parentheses event after the so there's a form after a submit capture the default event and pass it into function make droid so that then we can prevent it so that it doesn't do unexpected things to confirm that things are running so far we'll put a little console output so console log fn make droid is running and console log fn droid name gen is running so i should see at least one of these running if i save it and check my code going to refresh no errors going to click go console output function name droid is running great I could also inside of any of those boxes press enter on the keyboard and it should then trigger submit obviously we're not running droid name gen yet because nothing is triggering it alright so what's going to happen inside of the make droid is that we need to create variables that represent the items that the user has typed in. So via jQuery, dollar symbol, val in first, we are going to reference an object on screen via jQuery. So pound in first. So the dollar symbol basically is a shorthand for document.getElementById, technically more like document.getElementById and such. So make sure you've got the pound sign there. So many students have trouble in this part of the class because they forget to put the pound sign inside of the quotes because we're used to document.getElementById. Well, here in jQuery, we need the pound sign for IDs or the dot for classes within the quotes. Next, I'm saying dot val method. So we had something like this before in plain old JavaScript. Just for your notes, var val in first, whoops, capital letter there, var val in first is equal to document dot get element by id quotes in first dot value. So that would have been the plain old JavaScript way. And look at how much basically half of the code is necessary for the jQuery method, the jQuery version. After that, we also then need to capture val in last the same way. And val in dob. the value of what was put into the date field. Semicolon, I'm finished creating my objects. I want to do some simple checking here that the person filled in all three of these items. So with an if statement, we can do that. We'll say, and if else, 
checking if all fields are not empty. If all the fields are not empty, then it can proceed to process and create the name. In if we're checking dollar $val in first space exclamation point equals equals space open quote end quote. We're checking here as long as the first name is not equal to empty, great, we can proceed. Well, I also need to check that the last name is not empty and the date of birth is not empty. So we'll use double ampersand, which means and. Check that the first name is not empty and check that the last name is not empty. and check that the date of birth is not empty. So what I'm trying to do here is check that all three of these conditions are true. It's a little backwards. We're checking that the first name is not empty and that the last name is not empty and that the birthday is not empty. Therefore, we can do some console output here that says all fields are filled in. Or else, at least one field is empty. Checking that in the browser, I won't fill in anything and I'll click go. At least one field is empty. I'll fill in the first field, the second field, but not the birthday. Click go. At least one field is empty. If I put anything in these, all fields are filled in. So our if else statement here has checked that all these fields are not empty. Well, that console output for the error is fine but I also uh, have a div on screen where I can show some sort of message. We can reference it via L, error message, dot HTML. We're going to write some text here. Please enter all fields. This would have been equivalent to if this was done in plain old JavaScript, L error message dot inner HTML equal to quotes, please enter all fields. Again, the classic code is longer and the jQuery code is shorter, meaning you'll make less mistakes. Yes, it's a variation to learn, but usually most developers use jQuery or equivalent to write less code. Well, what also we can do here before I end my statement, I'm going to chain some more jQuery methods. Dot hide and dot slide down. So this will give me a little animation. Not only will the text appear, but it will appear to slide into view. Slide down with capital D. So now if I refresh that, I fill nothing and I click go. Look at that, it slid down because we first hide that field and then display what's inside of it via slide down. All right, so in our true block of our if statement, that's where we're going to do more. We're going to create a variable here, random droid. That's equal to a math operation floor. I want to round down a random number, math.random times droid type dot length. So give me a random number based on how many droid types I have. Round it down. This is how I can pick a random droid from my arrays. In the element of 
name you, I want to display the person's name originally. .html. So we're going to write some HTML in that div. First, we'll start off with val of in first plus space, quote, space plus last name, val in last. I want to do the same sort of trick of sliding it into view. So the person's name will appear. First and last name with a space in between, it'll slide into view. Let's check that. I need all of these filled in. I'm just going to put whatever for the birthday. Click go. My name appears. It slides into view. Next, I want to display the droid name. So based on the person's first name and last name, we will get a droid name. In the element of droid, of name droid, we're also writing some HTML here. We're going to say first, your droid name is plus. I'm going to reference here a function. This is, where we met, this is where we reference our function to actually generate the name, function droid name gen. So we're going to say fn droid name gen parentheses. So we're going to call the droid name gen function based on first name, last name, birthday. That will be output into the name droid div written as HTML. Well, fn droid name gen expects first name, last name, and birthday in that order, because that's how we defined it here. Name 1, name 2, DOB. So name 1, name 2, and DOB come from val in first, comma, val in last, comma, val in DOB. Those three things that we captured a moment ago will be passed into this function and then ultimately displayed on screen. I also want that slide down stuff to happen. So be careful here. Dot hide. I've got the hide method of jQuery attached to the function, not after the parentheses. We're going to delay for one second a slide down. So process the person's name, hide it from view, but, but wait one second, then slide down, because I want their regular name to appear first, and then their droid name to appear one second later. So eventually we'll fill in the details of this function droid name in just a bit. So if we've got this function droid name gen that does something, now it's time to fill that function in. I'm going to jump down to function droid name gen. And we need to do a lot of interesting things in this function. For example, as I said, some browsers will show you a a calendar and some won't. So we cannot assume that a person will type in a birthday in this format. They may type it in a different way. So we want to check what did they type in the date. We'll create a variable called mo month. That'll be equal to parse int method, comma, my droid equal to a string that's empty. So eventually, the person's name will be converted into my droid. Before that, we need to check the month. Parse int is a method where we're going to create a number out of something to make sure it's a number. We're going to parse an integer. So from dob dot slice. Notice my pop up a string to convert into a number because the person may write a number or the word January, I need to convert it into a number. 
So whatever the person typed into the date of birth, we're going to slice. We're going to extract a piece, 5 to 7, the, from the 5th character to the 7th character, comma, 10. So this first part here, where the first comma is, let's extract, let's slice, let's grab a piece of what was written in the date of birth between the fifth and seventh positions. We're going to parse it. We're going to convert it into a number, base 10. So that should be, for example, 12, which would be December, or 5, which would be May. So store the month of what was put into the date of birth. There's the possibility that what we've extracted is not really a number. So we have to check if is n a n. Now notice the very particular spelling here. n a n is not a number. This is a method that checks if something's a number or not. If it's not a number, it says true. This thing is not a number. So we're saying if the month is not a number, true, then OK. Let's set month to math.seal. Math.random up to 12. OK, so if for some reason the word January was put into the date of birth instead of 0, 1, let's create a random number between 1 and 12, so one of the 12 months, round it up, and set it to the month. So if that month that was input was not a number, turn it into a number. No need for an else. That's all we need to check. Else would be, OK, keep MO the same. Switch. And of switch to generate the name. So this switch is going to take the month, and based on it, we'll create a type of droid. January will be a battle droid. February will be an astromech. March will be a protocol droid, etc. So based on the person's birth month, a different droid will be selected. That's why we needed to do this. We're getting the date of birth, but I only want the month. The month may be a word, so convert it into a number. And based on the number, either the converted one or the non-converted one will have various cases. Case 1, case 2, case 3, all the way up to 12, but I'll leave that to you. I'll leave a default. So we have the case of January, February, March. We would have the other months up to 12, and then a default. So in case the person's birth month is January, we'll do the following. My droid, which is currently empty on line 87, will now be set to name one dot slice plus quotes dash plus month. So I'm trying to create a scheme that looks like BT1, droid designation BT1. Well, we're taking the letter of the first name, we're taking the first two letters of the person's first name. We're slicing. Whatever the person's first name is, V-I-C-T-O-R, take the first two letters, slice them, add a dash, and the month number. That'll give me, in my case, V-I-1. In the case of Janet, it'll be J-A-1. So this has generated JA1 based on Janet being born in January. After the switch, this is returned so that it is displayed on screen. 
we can test this, and then there's an error that I realized here, sorry. So, so if I put in my name, January 1st, year doesn't matter, I click go, you might have been getting an error here, hide is not a function. I made a little mistake here on line 75. I added hide, delay, slide down. That is all correct, but that has to happen after .html. So we need to move this here. So notice the difference. We have .html, it's opening parenthesis, goes all the way over here, then hide, delay, and slide down. This other parenthesis here is related to function droid name. So you should have double parentheses and then dot hide, delay, and slide down. When I test this, no more error. And I'm starting to get some output. Your droid name is VI1. So it took what was in the first name. So if we have Janet Jones, January 1st, go, JA1. It took the first two letters. Now, we don't have the other cases set up yet. So if you click go there, there's nothing to output because that other case hasn't been set up yet. When I was testing it, I commented out, obviously, those placeholders there. What I would like is to force those letters uppercase. I would like that the, the letters are, are uppercase right here. So that's easy. We can say, OK, after we slice, we'll say dot to uppercase. The difference is that when I fill in any name here in January, it's capital letters. Capital letters. Next, it's time to set up the scheme for case two. Well, I'm going to say that in case two, this is going to be in the format of R2D2. So I'm going to need the first letter of the first name, the first letter of the last name, the numbers and dashes. So my droid is equal to n1.slice. This time I only need the first letter from 0 to 1. I also need to uppercase it. I'm going to add the month, which would be 2 plus the dash, plus the second letter, the first letter of the second name, and two dot slice. So that's from zero to one. Two uppercase, plus the month. So this creates a scheme of R2D2. Victor Campos would be V2, C2, if my birthday is February. Testing that. Victor Campos. February. This other stuff really doesn't matter. It's all about the month. Go. V2C2. If it was Janet Jones in February. J2J2. Third. I want the third month to be in the format of C3PO. So I want the first letter of the first name and two letters of the last name, plus the dash, plus the number, the number three of the month. So my droid is set to n1.slice, the first letter of the first name from 0 to 1, to uppercase plus quotes dash plus 
the number of the month, so that's M-O, plus the second name, dot slice, and this time I want from 0 to 2, so the first two letters of their name to uppercase. That should create a syntax of C dash 3 PO if their birthday is in March. So Victor Campos March V 3 CA Janet Smith in March J 3 SM I'll do one more for default and then your your part of the homework will be to set the other months. So there's the possibility that we don't capture a month somehow. So we've got a just in the format of triple zero. This is one of the new uh, droids in Star Wars, triple zero. So the way I want this to happen is my droid is equal to simply whatever month plus a dash plus whatever month plus a dash plus whatever month. So at the moment, I've only got three possible months. Let's say I was born in May. So the fifth month. That reaches then the default case. Your droid name is 555, triple five. So if we got it up to this point, we're creating the droid name. Next, we want to say what droid type they are and the picture. This takes us back to our make droid. So line 75 is the one that puts the name out there. Next line. Here we need to do something interesting. It's going to say, you are a battle droid. You are an astromech droid. You are a protocol droid. Well, listen to what I said. You are an astromech droid. You are a battle droid. We have different syntax in English for words like astromech and battle. You are an astromech droid. You are an interrogation droid. You are a battle droid. You are a protocol droid. So we have to check which of those syntaxes do we get. This is similar to when we have, there are seven players. There are one players. Well, better would be, there is one player. So that syntax, we can check for that and then write the appropriate thing. This will be an if-else statement. So after setting the person's original name and their droid name, it's time to set their droid type and check for a or an. If else, you can say here if and if else to check for a droid or an droid. The way we check this is within our array we have an astromech position 0, a battle droid position 1, an interrogation droid position 2, a medical droid position 3, etc. So it's just based on the position of our array. Therefore, if random droid triple equals zero, so random droid comes from the length of the droid type. Astromech, n astromech droid. If we randomly have chosen the zero with droid, we're going to write something in a certain way, or else it's going to be a battle droid. Well, some of them are going to be N, like astromech and interrogation, and some will be singular, a uh, battle or medical. 
So we have to say here, if it's the zero width, an astromech, or that's the pipe character, that's shift backslash, it's right above the enter key, or random droid, triple equals, two, this section is Droid has an name, or else console droid has a name. Checking this, I can fill in whatever. Go. Droid has a name. It had randomly chosen a battle droid. So the point of this is to display in the L droid type some HTML, which we will hide, delay, two seconds, slide down, What we're going to display in HTML is first the string U R N space plus droid type random droid space plus quote space droid U R N astromech droid you are an interrogation droid. Hide that first, wait two seconds, then slide down. Next, we've got a picture to display. So L droid picture dot A T T R dot hide dot delay dot slide down. So we're going to wait three seconds. ATTR is to, for us to be able to set the attribute, any attribute we want. In our case, source attribute. LDroid picture is referencing this image. And it has a source attribute which is empty. So with ATTR attribute, we're setting the attribute to the particular picture, which is comma droid pick based on the random droid, which is then hidden, delayed three seconds, slide down. Don't forget the parentheses there. So if I try to test this, there's actually a problem that I didn't notice. Sorry, you may have been yelling at the screen, oh, you missed something. So here's what's going on. If you've written the code exactly as me, there's a problem here. Uh, I keep getting, you are a undefined droid. Well, what's happening is if we hit you are a something droid, that means that we are in this area. You are a something droid. So this is becoming undefined, tracing it back. Okay, droid type is a an array droid type. Okay, that seems to check out droid type. Well, what else this is, is we're supposed to check a random droid position going back. Okay, random droid, random droid, line 72. Random droid is from math.floor, math.random. And there it is. It's very subtle. I relied on the autocomplete, but autocomplete didn't autocomplete one thing. Math.floor is a method, and so is math.random, a method, not a property. I forgot to put the parentheses. So that was very subtle there. And what's happening is then that random droid was becoming an undefined not a number. I did a quick console output a moment ago to see what that was, not a number. Oh, okay, well I hadn't actually made that into a number. So now when I save that and run it, putting in the this quick information, go, 
you are an astromech droid. And here comes R2-D2. So that's our if section. This is related to if it is an droid, an astromech, an interrogation. We need something almost exactly the same for, for a, specifically displaying the droid. So you can take the code where we set the attribute of the image tag and copy that and paste it also in the else section. So now we have the code that will display both the attributes of an droid and a droid. Let's check that out. So I expect something for my particular name. An interrogation droid. At the moment, I have three cases, January, February, March. And when I test it, I then get the output, and then I get either one of the three types of droids. I'll provide a few more droids in the assignment, and of course, you can use your own graphics if you want. There's still a little bit more to do here. The name is still there. I want the name to clear out so that I can fill in a new person. Well, we've got a function that does that. After picking either a droid or android, we get outside of the end of if else, and here we call function clear form. Whether it was a droid or an droid, clear the form so that we can put in a new name. So Victor Campos, born in, um, let's say, a month we don't have, uh, 704-1977, go. Your droid name is 777. You are an astromech droid. So that is hitting the default because I don't have a case of 7. Again, any of these that have not been filled in, any of these months that have not been programmed is going to trip the default case. So any, everything's inconsequential, really, except for the month. And when we go there, we get 888, you are an interrogation droid. Well, I'm going to fill in um, month 8, for example, so that, that you have a little bit more uh, practice about how you'll need to do this. So for the eighth month, I need to return to the function name gen and create a new case. Case 8, which will be August, colon. I want a droid in the format of IG88. So that means I'm going to take the first letter of the first name, the first letter of the last name, dash, and then add the month to eights. So my droid is equal to n1.slice, the method of slice, and I only want from 0 to 1, the first letter of the first name, to uppercase, method, plus n2slice, from 0 to 1, the first letter of the second name, plus the dash plus the month plus the month. And then I break the statement because I'm finished with that particular case. So I fill in the first name, last name, the eighth month, go. And I get VC88. You are an astromech droid. So in the assignment, you'll have to fill in something for each of these months based on what we've done so far with some sort of interesting droid designation for each of them. You'll also have to complete the number of droid types and pictures. Let's do one more. 
there's also a medical droid. So comma, if you return back to the droid type array, line 50, we have a new item in the array, medical. And I have an appropriate medical droid picture, so you can borrow the existing link and just change it a little bit into the droid pick array, add a new item to the array, and simply replace astromech with medical, lowercase. So now we've got a fourth type of droid that could possibly display. It won't appear very random in the beginning because if there are only three droids to choose from, well, then it's not that random. So I have no sixth month. I know that that will be, that'll go to default, but let's see if we can hit the medical droid. Go. Didn't get it that time, but you get the idea. So after a few tries, I finally got the medical droid. I wouldn't want to be his patient, but there's a result. And so that's the big idea for this project. We've got, we've got several jQuery based objects that we created. That's the dollar symbol at the beginning of each. We use the jQuery selector syntax to replace document.getElement by ID. We can create individual elements or elements full of a particular object. We reference those elements with new methods, dot hide, dot fade in, dot val, a variety of new methods. And remember, these methods that are jQuery based cannot be applied to plain old JavaScript based variables. So if I had val in first, plain old JavaScript, which we made from document.getElementById, we would use the value property. But instead, since it's jQuery based, we use the val method. We had some if else statements that checked for non empty form fields. We did some math, randomly choosing a droid from our options, a little bit of animation, slide in, fade in, etc. Yes, there's also slide up and fade out. There's dot hide and dot show. We have dot HTML method instead of dot inner HTML. We set up a way to check for syntax of the English language, a droid versus android. We use the attribute method, ATTR, to set the attribute of an empty image tag. And then we had something creative happening with function droid name Jen, taking the person's first name, last name, date of birth, mixing it all up and creating some fun droid names via slicing the strings, a bunch of concatenation, various cases that we could have, which you will need to complete. And all of that is from submitting the form. So either clicking the button or pressing enter on the keyboard. Based on this, you will create your own droid name generator and you'll have a week to complete it. Check online to see what are the full requirements of the assignment. And I can't wait to see your version. This has been Victor Campos for CIS 165. See you next time.